Hi folks, welcome to Eyes on the Sky for the weekend of May 8th, 2020. Today, we're going to look at a few deep space objects that we only know about because of a famous telescope celebrating its 30th anniversary. Tonight, we'll go right to the nighttime sky so we can focus on the amazing explorations of the Hubble Space Telescope. On April 25th, 1990, the Hubble Space Telescope deployed into orbit 340 miles above the Earth's surface. It is free from atmospheric distortion and some of the blocked wavelengths from the Earth's atmosphere. The Hubble telescope can see visible, near-infrared, and ultraviolet wavelengths and has a number of scientific instruments on board, including cameras, spectrographs, and sensors that have enabled us to learn a tremendous amount about stars, galaxies, and the origin of the universe. Here it is, looking at the Horsehead Nebula in Orion. A nebula is a cloud of dust and gas that typically forms around the beginning or the end of a star's life. One of the amazing things Hubble brought to our attention is the tremendous number of other galaxies in our universe. Over the course of 10 days, Hubble stared into a dark corner of space near the Big Dipper. And from this long exposure came the Hubble deep field image. In this picture, Stars have diffraction lines that look like crosses of light through them. There are a few in the photo. Every other object that you see lit up is a galaxy. Over 3,000 in all, in the blackest, farthest reaches of space that we had ever seen, each of them containing billions of stars. We can look at some of these galaxies up close, thanks to the Hubble telescope. Can you star hop to the place we left off last week? Look for the backward question mark beneath the Big Dipper to find Leo the Lion. In this constellation, there's a famous trio of galaxies that delight amateur astronomers called the Leo Triplet. M66 is the largest at 100,000 light years across. It's unusually asymmetrical for a barred spiral galaxy, likely because of the pull of its closest two neighbor galaxies in the triplet. If we look left toward the bright star Spica, we can find Virgo again. Just below it is M104, the Sombrero Galaxy, which is a lens-shaped galaxy that was beautifully captured by the Hubble telescope. The upper region of Virgo boasts a large cluster of over 2,000 galaxies, which is the center of the Virgo supercluster, of which our Milky Way galaxy is a part. Here we find M87, a large elliptical galaxy. The Hubble telescope showed this enormous galaxy, 53 million light years from Earth, and discovered the supermassive black hole at its center. Later, it saw the jet of electrons 5,000 light years across shooting out of it. This black hole was the first ever captured in an image, which was just last year with the Event Horizon Telescope. This telescope is actually an international network of radio telescopes. Now let's climb up from the Y shape of Virgo to a small constellation we haven't yet talked about next to the orange-red star Arcturus in Boetes. Coma Berenices is Queen Berenices of Egypt's hair, part of a mythological story of love and sacrifice. In this constellation, we find M64, the Black Eye Galaxy, a spiral so named for a dark band of dust that surrounds the center of the galaxy. This was captured in stunning detail by the Hubble telescope. The Hubble Space Telescope has allowed us to see more than galaxies and nebulas, though. We've gotten amazing images of comets, asteroids, stars, and planets over the past 30 years that have helped us really learn more about our universe. For instance, this image showing the ultraviolet auroras near Jupiter's poles. We'll end tonight with an update to the deep field picture called the Hubble Ultra Deep Field. This shows nearly 10,000 galaxies. 
this amazing perspective on our universe took over 11 days and 400 orbits to complete. That's all for tonight, folks. If you want to see what the Hubble is studying now or find some awesome images from the past 30 years, check out the links below. We'll see you next time. Keep looking up.